What's up gamers? Uh, today we want to introduce this new series uh, to the channel and what we're going to be calling this is the Madden 16 training camp. Now we did something very similar to this last season for the Madden 15 training camp um, in Madden, uh, using Madden 25 and what we want to do this year is we want to do the same thing but we want to do it for Madden um, NFL uh, 16. And uh, today what we're going to be covering is first and foremost how to practice. And uh, we're going to show you how to practice uh, and how to practice and prepare uh, in Madden 16, and uh, but we're going to use Madden 15 as an example guide. So, what we want to do first and foremost is we're obviously in practice mode. It's, we're in that setting, and and the first thing I want to talk to you today is from the 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 perspective of offensive labbing, what it means to lab offensively, and uh, what it is uh, that I want to kind of reiterate. And to do this, we're going to use the, uh, a specific formation that I really enjoy uh, in Madden 15. We're going to use the shotgun bunch. Uh, and, and the shotgun bunch, what we like to do for this is we like to flip the formation. And, and I want to just use a sample play. And, and again, this is, uh, you know, we're really kind of just only getting our feet wet here. There's so many things that you can do with this. But uh, one of the things I want to cover, first and foremost, is offensive labbing. And uh, so you could do this out of any formation. Uh, you know, we could go to the wide trips. And you want to pick whatever play you want to practice. And, uh, you know, for example, here we have the stick and nod, a popular play, or the, the packer slot seam, or, or the strong flood, or any of these plays that we want to practice. And um, today we're going to use the shotgun bunch. And so we're going to use the play action post, uh, one of my favorite plays uh, in, in Madden history, and especially uh, this season. Now, when we come out to the place, play call uh, snap menu here. Uh, the other thing we want to do uh, for our defense real quick, and I didn't cover this, and I want to cover it really quickly because I think it is really important. Uh, on defense, you want to always come out in, a, in, in a whatever formation is going to match the personnel. So, for example, the nickel personnel matches the uh, three wide receiver personnel. If I was going to come out and say like an I formation, or a full house or uh, something like that with that personnel, then I would check down and I would come out in a 46 or a 4-3. But because I want to come out in the uh, shotgun, which is a three wide receiver set, um, you're going to see here when I pick the play, PA post is going to show that I'm coming out in three wide receivers. So I want to pick a defense like the nickel that has three corners. Once I have my defensive formation selected, then I want to scroll down and I want to always come out in a cover four defense and this is going to give me access to three different types of coverages to look at this from as well as some man coverages I can look at this from the cover four against the cover three the cover two and then I can also work on it against two man under and then a cover zero blitz because I'm going to utilize the uh, everything that the quick audibles allow me to use so I come out in this cover four and this is going to give me access to several different coverages that I can use with my audible menu. I can go to cover two man, overstorm brave, cover two, or cover three buzz press. So four or five different play calls that I can practice this against. Now the first thing first uh, when labbing a formation is you, you want to check out everything there is to know about your formation. So first and foremost, uh, what are your quick audibles? And we check here. We've actually already got ours customized, but you see we have four different plays, and you want to look at see uh, what uh, plays you have there. You always want to lab all those plays and, and really work up. But the first step in labbing a play, in my opinion, is to run it against man coverage. So we're going to audible to cover two man. And what we want to do here is we want to just snap the ball, and we want to sit in the pocket and take a sack. Now you see, once we take a snap, what I want to do now is I want to go into instant replay and I want to see what happened on the play. So I go into instant replay and I want to look at every route. So first I want to look at the tight end. I'm going to notice that this flat route doesn't really get open against man-to-man -man coverage. So that's a no-go against man. Then I'm going to look at this X route to Cole Beasley and I'm going to notice that this seems to get inside separation against man-to-man -man coverage. So that is something I can work with. Then I'm going to go to Terrence Williams' route. And one of the things I notice here is, again, we have that inside positioning. Maybe a down and inside pass lead could complete the ball to him. And then finally, I want to look at the only other receiver I have on a route, which is Des Bryant. And I notice that he's unbumpable, means he gets free release. And then the other thing I notice about it is that he seems to have this outside positioning on this cut. He seems to roast his defender. It might be an upside or a uh, up and outside pass lead could complete against man coverage. So there's my hypothesis, and now I want to check. I want to throw every route against man coverage. So I'm going to pass lead this route to Witten, and I notice that it gets intercepted. 
And so then I'm going to not throw that to him now, and now I'm going to change him to a different route, something that may go well with uh, a man beater. And what I want to do now is look at this uh, and now throw to my next receiver. Uh, and so I'm going to throw to Cole Beasley over the middle, passing down to the inside, and you see he gets open and makes a catch for me, and I don't even have to click on or do any of that stuff. The next step is to then go to the next receiver, um, and we have poor blocking there. That's one other thing to note is how does your lineman block with your play calls. And here you're going to notice that Terrence Williams is going to come across the field, and he's going to get that inside separation and going to be a viable option against man-to-man -man coverage. And then finally, my last receiver, Des Bryant. I'm going to try to see what he can do against man coverage. Pass lead up to the outside, like I said, and it seems that the safety comes out of there, so maybe, maybe if I try to pass lead down into the outside, it may give me a little bit better uh, uh, of an option. So here we go. Take a snap. Pass lead down to the outside, and we see that that route now beats man-to-man -man coverage. So a couple things that we've noted here is that uh, we have three routes on the play that beat man-to-man -man defense. We have two routes that really are not very effective in that the running back is blocking and the Witten route is uh, it's a flat pattern. So now what I want to do is I want to use hot routes. And now I want to try to find the hot routes that will fit with this. So for example, for Jason Witten, I'm going to place him on a slant pattern because I know from my previous experience that slant patterns beat man-to-man -man coverage. One of the things that you need to do in labbing, and this is we'll do it every year, is we'll take different routes that we tend to use. So, for example, I'm going to run Terrence Williams on a curl route, and I'm going to put him on the outside, or excuse me, Des Bryant. I'm going to throw a standard curl route, and I want to see how that does against man coverage. And you see here that um, that does a good job uh, against man. And unfortunately, I forgot that we were in that cover four and forgot to switch us out to man. But what we'll notice here, just to show you the concepts, um, you're going to see that this curl route is going to be able to beat man coverage. For some reason, we're having trouble with the offensive pass protection, um, so I'm, I'm having difficulty getting the ball off. But here you should see if Jason Witten could block him with max protect here. But we'll see that pass lead down. What's good lord, San Francisco is coming through. All right, if we get sacked on this play. Pass lead down, and you see this curl route does a good job against B man. Okay? Um, another possibility of a route. Let me just, uh, we're just going to show some examples. It's an in route. So if we place Des Bryant on an in route, let's see if this beats man to man. So we go, and we see that he gets that inside position and does a good job at beating man to man. Okay? So just some options, uh, just plenty of things to look at. And, uh, and, and to try to see what you want to do. And, and of course, we're going to do this with every hot route. So now we're going to try a comeback route, and we'll see how that does against man. We see that the comeback is unbumpable, and we see that it beats man and man coverage to the outside. Um, you know, and we could do this across the board. You know, we'll do it for a streak. We'll do it for a, 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 a comeback. We'll do it for a drag. We'll do it for every route in our hot route menu to kind of see what we have to offer. And then we can go into a play like this, this PA post play, when I'm trying to beat man to man. And I know that Jason Witten's route, uh, I can place him on a zig pattern to beat man. I can place him on a slant pattern to beat man. Or I can place him on a curl pattern to beat man. Those are kind of his go-to routes. I know that uh, I, what I want to see here is I want this slant pattern to really kind of flow with the play. The players already have a lot of routes flowing from left to right. And so I'm going to place Witten on a slant pattern to keep the play flow working. Next, I know that option routes are really effective to beat man-to-man -man coverage, but I don't want him to congest with those slants, so I'm going to motion him over to the left side. And now you see that this play that was once only had three people beating man, we now have f all five routes uh, beat man-to-man -man coverage. And then we'll work with the zone as well. We'll lab against zone, and we'll run through and see how can we get the same play. And we'll check and see what reads are open against zone and what are not. For some reason, literally, the defensive line uh, for the 49ers are ridiculous right now. But like I said, 
here we're going to look. We see once again the slant pattern beats man. So now we now we have that, okay? And we just do this across the board every play that we run. And we so now that we have all five routes beating man-to-man -man coverage, now we're going to try it against zone. And so we're going to run our play, and we're going to go through our reads. And we see that Jason Witten's route doesn't do a good job at beating zone coverage. Okay, so we need to note that. However, we want to leave that route because it's really good with the play and it beats man. So now we're going to go to our next progression read. And we see now this time that this little square pattern to Terrence Williams beats the zone defense. Okay, and then we'll just continue the process and then we'll go to our next read. Um, and you'll see here that Cole Beasley's route does a good job at beating the cover three. And we will do this for every single coverage in the game. And we will practice, and we will practice, and we will practice until we have this play down against every single basic zone coverage in the game. Cover three, cover four, cover two, cover six. All of those coverages, we will be able to beat those with one of our routes. The next thing that we'll do, like I said, is we're going to go through our quick audibles, and we want to work with our motions and see, see where we can motion snap people and see how we can utilize the motion to even take advantage of it and how we can use different routes with different motions because different routes do different things with different motions. For example, man coverage, if we motion out a curl route and we snap it before he sets, he's going to become unbumpable and be a nice little back shoulder throw for us. Things like that is what goes into lapping on the offensive side of the ball. But the idea behind labbing is very simple. We want to practice every single option that we can, try to take advantage of the most effective ones, put those in our scheme, and make them fit well together with play selection. That's the basic premise of labbing. I hope you guys learned um, what we're talking about. One other thing I want to show you, and this is essential, is that you can actually change where the ball is placed. And you do that by hitting the options menu or the pause menu, what you want to do is you want to come up here and you're going to go to respot ball, you want to hit X. And what you can do is you can move it closer to the goal line to practice your red zone plays, or you can move it farther away to practice your shot plays, and then you place the ball down by hitting the X button. So now, I now have all my shot plays that I can work on, and I can work on plays like halfback slip screen and see how they work uh, against a man defense or a cover four or a cover six or whatever, whatever I want to practice against. Um, and you see that this is how the process goes. This is how I know that my plays work. This is how I know that they work against certain plays because I practice and I lab and I look at plays and I take plays that have different routes and I try them out. And the idea behind it is to make plays like this all day. So that's practice mode offense. Um, we'll show you some practice mode defense in our next episode. But this has been 16 Training Camp.